Upon successfully logging in, you will have a client that looks like this. Along the top, you have File, Edit, Contacts, Calls and Conversations. Under the Contacts tab, you are able to search, choose whether you see contacts by first or last name, and also whether you see profile images and contacts even when they are offline. The Calls tab allows you to configure features such as call forwarding, twinning and do not disturb. You can also check your voicemail here at the bottom. The Conversations tab enables you to start a new chat or look at existing ones. Here in the top right you can click on this icon which allows you to start new chats, add contacts, new groups or review my room invites. Here on the left we have four options to choose from. You have contacts where you can look up your contacts that you've added, look at your company directory and also your Outlook contacts, call history which also allows you to check voicemails, chat history and also the dial pad. Finally moving back up to the top here we have the social area. Here you're able to set your availability presence by selecting any of the predefined statuses to show other Collaborate users or if you have this set up to read off your Outlook calendar in your client settings and extensions this will be done automatically. You can also set your location by clicking here and any status you wish to manually enter. There is an automatic presence available within Collaborate that links up with your Outlook calendar. This means that if you have an appointment in your calendar, it will show that you're in a meeting. If you're on a call using Horizon, this will change to call. The only time it doesn't do this is if you have overridden the automatic setting to select one of the other predefined statuses within the client. You can also see another user's presence by subscribing as shown here. Or, if you search for that user in the company directory, the presence information will be retrieved. If, however, you have a contact saved but you haven't subscribed, presence information may be up to two minutes delayed. Within the client, you're also able to search for contacts, either ones you've added yourself, those within the company directory, or those that are in your Outlook Contacts tab if you've enabled the client to look up Outlook information. If you haven't done this, this can be done by going to Settings, extensions and ensuring that the enable outlook contact search is enabled. You can type the name of the contact into the search bar then hover over them and choose how you would like to communicate whether this is chat, call or video call. Alternatively you can right click on the contact as well for a few more options such as join room or invite to my room. Collaborate also has the concept of favourites within contacts. To favour to contact, which puts them at the top of the contacts list, all you have to do is identify the contact you want to favourite, right click on them and then select set as favourite. To remove them from your favourites, you just have to right click and then select remove from favourites. You can also set up groups on Collaborate, such as your team or a project team that you're involved with. You can do this by going to Contacts and selecting New Group. Then name the group and then to add users into the group, right click and select Add to Group and then the group you wish to add them to. And similar to Favourites, if you want to remove a user from that group, just right click on the user and select Remove from Group. When making a call, by selecting this icon here, you're able to mute the call hold it, transfer, make it a conference call, park it or change it to video call. You can also make a video call by clicking on the video call icon here or by right clicking a contact from the contacts tab. You can also chat with other Collaborate users. These chats can be on a one-to-one -one basis with another user by right-clicking and selecting the chat option, or you can drag another contact in from the contacts list into the chat to make this a multi-user chat. When you make this a multi-user chat, this becomes an instant room, 
where you can continue in a group chat or you can select the voice call or video call icon to escalate the chat into either a voice or video call. Going back to a one-on-one -on -one chat as shown on the screen here again, you can also click here in the top right to join that person's room. Your My Room is the centre of the Collaborate experience and it can be accessed by clicking on this icon here. You can then set up audio or video conferences and, if internal contacts are required, they are able to simply right click on the owner and select Join Room. Another approach, again, is for the owner to simply drag and drop the contact required into the My Room. They will then get a notification with a choice to either accept or reject. As well as this, you can invite people whether or not they have Collaborate by clicking on the link here. Please bear in mind, however, that the guest client is only compatible with Google Chrome. And if a guest is wanting to use the screen share option, they will need to download an extension from the Google Chrome store and they will need to restart their browser. Once in the room, participants must then select how they wish to conduct the communication by selecting voice or video. When in a conference, you're able to share your desktop or program by selecting this icon. You will then be shown a preview of what is going to be shared and you're able to pause or end the sharing while continuing the conference. As well as these options, the usual features are available such as muting, parking, pausing and transferring, along with adding additional users. You also have some further settings by clicking the three dots above the participants list. You can select who has to request access to join your My Room, allow participants to share and also to copy the most recent attendee list.